Good morning and welcome to the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Glenville, New York. Today is Wednesday, May 13th, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Before we begin, let us remember our fellow parishioners who have died on this date. Mary Crosway, 1984, Elizabeth Fay, 1992, Irene Mead, 2014, Frank Pujan, 2014. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, as we gather for this feast this morning, we remember all our mothers enrolled in our Mother's Day Novena. We remember the soul of our brother William Sleesman and our brother Dennis Nowinski. Also, we pray for all the sick, those who suffer in any way, mind or body, and in particular today for Anna Rodriguez in Queens, New York, undergoing some surgery today, hopefully to uh, get her cured from this illness that she suffers from. We also today welcome any of you who are visiting us from our community, uh, outside of our community, and especially our friends from New Jersey. As we gather today, let's take a moment, as we do each time, to recognize our unworthiness to be around the table of the Lord, but to recognize, more importantly, 
God's great mercy and God's love for all of us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You were sent to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct our hearts, the hearts of your servants, toward yourself, that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul and Barnabas and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters. And they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let, Let us go rejoicing, rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let, Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of the Lord. Let, Let us go rejoicing, rejoicing to the house of the Lord.
my sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does bear fruit he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. And people will gather around them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. For by this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Having been a priest for many years, there are certain readings that recall certain situations for me. For example, St. Paul's letter, uh, love is patient, love is kind, always brings me to weddings that we've had here at Immaculate Conception. Most brides and grooms choose that reading. We hear different readings, too, about uh, God's love for us. And, and God holding us in the palm of his hand, as we hear in the book of wisdom, the souls of the just in the hands of God. That often reminds me of the funerals that we have here at Immaculate, because most people choose that reading. Today's reading, the wonderful story of the branches being pruned, brings me back many years ago to my seminary days with the Franciscans. And at that time, the Franciscans take care of themselves. They they clean their own house, they take care of their own properties, and in the seminary there was a lot of property to care for. And one of the sections in the land, on the land of the property of the seminary was our grapevine area. And I remember one day, it was late fall, my assignment was to go and to prune the grapevine. And so I had these little scissors and I was just taking the little ends off the grapevine and you know, pruning it for next year. But one of the sisters who worked for us, many sisters worked for us in the kitchen, uh, etc., she came out, and she was from Italy, and she was only about five foot two, and she came out with these big shears, and she says, this is how it's done. And she started trimming that grapevine almost down to the ground. I couldn't believe it. I said, oh gosh, I bet she's gonna kill it. But sure enough, the following year, there was tremendous abundance of grapes. It always struck me that this reading reminds us that in our lives we all need to be pruned. Very few of us get through life without some difficulty, without some humility, asking God for help and assistance. In this time of the pandemic, all of us are humbled in asking for God's assistance. But you notice that whenever God prunes us, God helps us to produce more. So let's not be discouraged when things are difficult because we know that we are in the hands of God. And no matter what it is that we need to face, whatever it is that we need to be humbled for, we know that God does it for a purpose. So good always comes from our suffering as it did for Jesus. So today, let's pray for each other as we continue this journey through this pandemic. Let's pray for everybody who is suffering in any way, mind or body, with the hope that Jesus is with us as he promises and will glorify us 
and our suffering will become a great gift to God. And together we stand and present our many needs and concerns to our God. For our Holy Father, Francis, and for our Bishop Edward, and for all those who guide us in the Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our civil officials, that they may be men and women of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those who suffer in any way, that their suffering may be experienced and accepted and presented back to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our doctors, our nurses, and all those who help us, especially during this time of the pandemic, that they will be greatly blessed for their generosity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may receive more vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And on this special feast of Our Lady of Fatima, we ask her intercession to help all of us through this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those gone before us in death, the members of our families, our parish community here at Immaculate Conception, our sister communities of Our Lady of Grace and St. Joseph, and especially today for all our mothers in our Mother's Day Novena, for William Sleesman and Dennis Nowinski, that they may be receiving the promise of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our prayer basket by the feet of the Blessed Mother, and for Anna Rodriguez during her time of healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's take a moment to add our own needs in the silence of our hearts. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, listen to the prayers of your faithful who gather here. Hear us and answer us. We make our prayer always in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever.
We pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours would be found pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God, our Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing forever the hymn of your glory as together they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the morning dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, that your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all those who serve the Church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her devoted spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. My sisters and brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please join with me in saying the prayer of spiritual communion. I wish, my Lord, to receive with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints. Even in this difficult time of the pandemic, we can still see the mercy and the love of God so present in the world with all the blessings God continues to give us. Yesterday, our community was blessed once again with its newest member, little Abigail Nally, fourth child of Mary and Joseph Nally was born. And so we welcome Abigail to our family. We congratulate mom and dad, Mary and Joseph. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure us for eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Mass is ended, we go in the peace and the love of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Enjoy your day.